Good morning, everyone, and welcome to our Daily Word. Today is Friday. It's April 1st. We are in a new month. For some, this is a day to play practical jokes. I haven't done that yet today. But early this morning, it was snowing on April 1st, so maybe that was the joke of the day. But anyway, you can see that this morning, I'm back in my car, as I will be next Monday and next Wednesday. Uh, for our daily word, I'm back here for in daily infusion number three. I have a couple of more to go, but glad you could join me for our time together. A reminder that Sunday morning we'll have worship at 1015 in person. If you wish to come in person, we'll share in the sacrament of communion as well on the fifth Sunday of Lent. If you can't join us in person and you're watching uh, via Facebook Live, be ready to have your elements ready, some crackers, some juice, some bread, whatever it is, and you can share in communion with us on Sunday morning. So I'm this morning from my Lenten devotional, which is called The Long Haul, which certainly uh, Lent is a long haul. It is the scripture that the writer has chosen, which I find interesting as I reread it again this morning is from Philippians chapter 3. It's just this very beginning part of this. Um, Paul, Of course, Paul gives instructions to the Philippian church all the time about how they're supposed to be and the life they're supposed to live. If you read on a little bit more, um, Paul talks to them about imitating him and how he lives his life. But this little portion of this verse from Philippians chapter 3, um, Paul says this, and this is the from the contemporary English Bible version. It's no trouble for me to repeat the same things to you because they will help keep you on track. So these are interesting words from Paul. Um, when I worked for the conference, for the Ohio Conference and, and done some church consulting work, um, we always taught churches and kids, teachers know this, that at least for me, there is this rule called the rule of 17. And the rule of 17 simply means that it takes on average 17 times to learn something. So, you know, when you're learning something, something even simple, some folks get it right away and some folks require many more times. So. The rule of 17 says, if you keep doing it, keep pursuing it, keep teaching it, eventually it'll all catch on. I think Paul alludes to, without meaning to, of course, the rule of 17. It's no trouble for me to repeat the same things to you because they will help keep you on track. For scripture writers, it seems that if they repeat something three times, um, it's meant to be something that we should hold on to. It drives the message home if it gets repeated. So I was thinking about that this morning, my very first sermon ever on my own. I remember it well. It's almost 38 years ago. It'll be 38 years in June, almost, um, that I started pastoring a church. 38 years ago in June, um, I preached on 1 Corinthians 13. And you all know the text, 1 Corinthians 13. It's that love chapter. It's, it's the mandate of how we're called to love. And that was my very first sermon ever. And for all of you who've known me for a long time, or even a short time for that matter, um, you know that my repeat button is set to the greatest commandment. They asked Jesus, What's the greatest commandment? What's the greatest law in the book? And they were trying to trap him, of course. And Jesus said, well, it's love God with all your heart, mind, soul, and strength. And the second is to love your neighbor as yourself. And he pounded that into them, this, this constant reminder that we are supposed to love each other and that love is really what gets us where we need to go. You know, love has the power to change the world. Um, People have sung about love in all kinds of ways, in love songs, in country songs, in pop songs, in gospel songs. You know, love is just, just driven into us. So Jesus, all along the way, 
said, love God, love your neighbor, love God, love your neighbor. And if you do that, you know, you, you're on the right track, as Paul says here. And I guess, as I thought about that, that's been, for 38 years, my repeat button. Love God, love your neighbor. Love God, love your neighbor. Love God, love your neighbor. It's been on repeat. And, you know, I posted something earlier this morning um, from just a quote that says, the best we can do is decide what we're going to do with the time that we have left. Something like that. Um, and then, of course, you know, we never know how much time we have left. But this repeat message, love God, love your neighbor, is something that we ought to just have on our repeat button. Now, it's interesting. We talked Wednesday night. When you get to the Monday Thursday, when you get to the Last Supper in the upper room, Jesus kind of changes the tune a bit. When he talks to the disciples and those gathered at the table, he says to them then about love, that they should love each other, love each other so powerfully, so greatly, so so very much, that you'll know my disciples by the way you love each other. And he just pounds that into the disciples' heads. It's It's on the repeat button. For us, I think it's good for us to have that repeat in our minds that we simply in our lives with whatever time we have left are called to love god with all we have love our neighbor as ourselves, and then importantly love each other so much that when anyone looks at us they'll know we're disciples because we love each other so much the world has lots of things on repeat you know, I've been driving to Dayton and, you know, the commercials are the same. The song, They play the same songs over and over again. They want to pound them in our heads because the more we know, the more it gets repeated to us. The rule of 17 says you just repeat it and repeat it and repeat it and repeat it until we finally get it. That's why, you know, when it's election season, that's why you get 17 things in the mail from the same politician because he or she knows that if you haven't decided when you get to the place to vote, when you go into the booth and you close the curtain behind you, which we really don't do anymore, if you haven't decided the name you've seen in your mailbox all of those times, that's the person you'll vote for. They're, they're counting on that. We are called to repeat the same thing again, but what we're called to repeat is love. Love God, love your neighbor, love each other so much that it will just be identifiable in our lives. If we love God, love our neighbor, and love each other so much that it becomes part of it. So, you know, for whatever time I have left, you know, and we don't know whatever time we have left, it's, I'm going to just keep that repeat button on, you know. It's really no trouble for me, as Paul says. It's really no trouble for me to repeat the same things to you. Love God, love your neighbor, love each other, because they help to keep you on track. Now, I know, you know, we're all human. Guys, driving down here, I haven't driven on the highway a lot since I worked for the conference. But man, I-75 is a racetrack. And people are all over the place, changing lanes, dodging in and out going way, way, way fast. I know it's hard to maintain, but it bears repeating. In all the kind of situations where we get aggravated or want to lash out or want to point out the differences between us, love God, love your neighbor, love each other so that we're identifiable and that keeps us on track. That's an interesting way that Paul gives it his listeners, and I think that's important for us to think about. So we should be repeatedly repeating. And as I have done for 38 years, um, this is my 10th year anniversary of being at St. Paul's. Uh, you've heard it again and again and again. And I hope what it does for us is to keep us on the life-giving track of discipleship and being followers of Christ. Hope that's hope that's a reminder of why it gets repeated again and again. So I'm headed for my next infusion. Thanks for joining me this morning. Um, know of God's love and grace and mercy that surrounds you. 
know of the love that Jesus calls to, to love God with our heart, mind, soul, and the strength, and to love our neighbor as ourself. And the mandate Jesus gives in the upper room, love each other so much that they'll know you are Christians by your love. Just, just do that in amazing ways. And may that love surround all of us and my love for all of you. And I look forward to seeing you Sunday morning at 1015 at worship. And then again here on Monday in the parking lot again at 10 a.m. Have a great day and a great weekend, my friends.